40% more efficient and fewer meetings overall. That's the result of working with Asana for the past 10 years now. Asana is the leading work management tool that we have implemented with Richlow in several hundreds of companies already. And my name is Bernd Kopin. I'm the CEO and founder of Richlow. In this video, you're going to learn why most meetings are really organized in a bad way and what to do about it using our methodology and Asana as a tool to run better meetings. The video is a step-by-step -step guide that will help you to understand how you can always have a very clear, up-to-date meeting agenda, have the next steps and item agenda points always up-to-date and visible to everyone all the time, have meeting protocols basically write themselves on their own without really having someone to type everything in a Word document, and really be up-to-date about the next steps and everything in one place. At the end, what you will get out of this is an improved meeting process that will make you up to more than 40% more productive. You will have the need for less meetings overall, and you will have a clear overview about accountabilities, next steps, so you will see who's doing what by when. Enjoy! All right, let's look how Asana can help us to facilitate a meeting process and to make it so much more efficient. First of all, if you aren't familiar with the architecture of Asana, I would recommend that you watch the basic videos about Asana to understand how it's built, how the structure works, and then come back and really build up your meeting process. So what I did is I created a new project, which you can do here in the top right and just uh, click on project to create a blank project. And in Asana, you can also use processes like a meeting process, and use the Asana project logic to really display this process. In that case, I created a new project called Team Meeting. So this particular meeting here in the example is a meeting where a group of people comes together maybe once a week, every Monday, 10 a.m. for example, and discusses points together that are recurring. So every week, points to discuss, um, points that they discuss differently every week and where they also document all the next steps. You see here on the top right all the people that participate in this meeting on a regular basis and that will also be informed every time there is a change or an update in the meeting. So what you see here is the meeting agenda. I created several sections to help us guide through the agenda. First of all, we start with so-called fixed agenda points, which are topics that we discuss every week. Like, for example, updates about new projects from the management, OKRs in our sales team, and the marketing KPIs. Right? So in this case, there is the management team, the sales and the marketing team coming to get together to discuss these points. The next topic is issues. Basically, things that come up every week on a like the different things that come up on a weekly basis. So things you need to discuss with this group of people, but that are not recurring, but a one-time issue that you need to solve. Then we also have the next steps here. So all the next steps that we together decide someone needs to take action on until the next meeting takes place. We also save all the meeting protocols and references here. We have to find some roles, a secretary and a facilitator, which I will explain in a bit. And we also have a um, logbook of all the done activities and tasks that we have seen and done so far. So let's dive into the process. Typically, you would have someone who moderates the meeting, a so-called facilitator. And for everyone to know who that person is, we would recommend to create one section here on the bottom, for example, which you call roles. Then you nominate a facilitator, that's the person moderating, guiding you through the meeting, and a secretary, so someone who during the meeting takes notes in the tasks or on the project. And also make sure that you re-elect these roles on a regular basis, for example, all every two or three months, to make sure everyone feels comfortable also moderating a, moderating a meeting or when someone goes on holidays that someone um, can take over. And usually the facilitator would then start and kick off with a check-in, for example, and starts going through the fixed agenda points. 
You also see that there's an assignee here. So there's always someone who's responsible on reporting, right? So in that case, um, Michelle is responsible to report on the management projects. To do so, she would just click on the first item. Ideally, we also share the screen, especially when working remotely. And Michelle's task is now to give an update on the management projects. For that, she just linked a management portfolio in the task description. Alternatively, if you're not using Asana portfolios, you can also just link whatever Google or Excel file you have to uh, display the updates on the screen. In that case, I'm gonna go for the portfolio. I'm clicking here. And then here we see all the projects in the management team, all the latest updates, the milestones that have or have not been reached, the priority, status, owner, and so on and so on. So basically now, Michelle would walk us through that. And if someone has questions or points to discuss, uh, we can do that right now. If she's ready, most likely we have yeah, discussed some next steps or some points that we now um, will discuss together. Then we continue with the OKR sales update. That will be my task. I also linked um, our goals here that I will run everyone through to give them an update. And then someone in the marketing presents their KPIs. What's important to know here is that we use some custom fields to really indicate, and that's also the task of the facilitator, to make sure we only use the time that we defined for each update. In this case, 10 minutes for the first two updates and five minutes for the last update. And we also indicate that this is an update and not a feedback that is needed or um, an issue that is raised or info that is needed. This is an update, right? So in this case, we have clearly defined what kind of information there is and how much time we plan for that. The role of the facilitator is to really stop the person once they reach the limit of 10 minutes. And after some time, if this is new to you, this concept of stopping someone after the required time or the um, defined time, um, after two or three sessions, people will really um, make sure they are in time. So during the updates, people might have come up with some issues that they didn't want to raise during the update presentation because it would um, uh, just uh, go into a discussion. So during the updates, they can just go into the issues and enter more issues they have. For example, a question about new management project, assigning it to me. I say the priority is two and what I need is feedback, right? And for this, as a standard, we always say for every feedback, for every point, we have two minutes to keep it um, really on a low scale here. So now the facilitator would ask, okay, what issues do we have to discuss here? And you see that the issues are organized by either being a feedback, an update, an issue, or an info needed. And we can already or decide how important this issue type is to sort them better and to um, prioritize better. And also the facilitator can prioritize the issues during the meeting to really focus on what's really important, P1, priority one, in case we run short on time, we focus on the priorities that are P1 to really not miss out on them, right? So now as a facilitator, I would go ahead and say, all right, Moses, you have an issue. What do you need? So you ask the question, what do you need? You see he needs feedback. You see he has two minutes of time. And now it's about it's Moses' turn to say what he needs. So he wants to um, get feedback on the team availability during holidays. Moses will present the issue he has. Then we have some minutes to discuss. And then the process is as follows. Once the issue is resolved, Moses got his feedback and says, yes, we would check the task off because the issue has been resolved. And if needed, we would come up with the next step here in the next section and saying, for example, communicating holiday plan, right? And we'll also assign it to Moses. And today is 11th of August. So he has one week time until the 18th of August, he should do it. And this is also part of the Tokyo project that he's working on. The priority is um, rather low. So now everyone knows 
that the issue has been resolved and the next step evolved that has been assigned to Moses is due on the 18th of October and has the priority three. And now also the people, and that's called multi-homing in Asana, who are part of the Plan Tokyo 2022 event, now see the task that Moses has to communicate the holiday plan. So this is another cool feature in Asana, multi-homing. One task or next step can live in several projects, in this case, in our meeting project and in the Tokyo project. It's one and the same task, just displayed in two different projects. Let's continue with the process. So Moses got what he needed. Now it's Katarina's turn to tell us what she ha what issue she has and why it's priority one with the customer ABC. So ideally, now we give the word to Katarina. She tells us what she needs and then we discuss. Once we find a solution, also again, we check that off and we create a new task. Ask them to help you solve problem with customer ABC and we give it to Katarina. So we decided that Ben, a colleague of ours, can help her to solve the problem. She has the task to reach out to them since it's uh, important, it will be today and important. And this also belongs to another project, to the customer appreciation event, which is also connected to this customer. In case we need to document something, we have the secretary, the second row, who will always make notes in the comment section saying, Ben is an expert on this. Please ask him to help us. If not, if he's not available, please come back to Michelle to clarify. All right. So everything that we say that needs to be documented will be documented by the secretary. In this case, it's Michelle and she documented everything. So now everything is visible to everyone in one place. And the next step is also visible to the team that works in this project. All right. During the course of the meeting, we will continue checking off tasks here and creating next steps. So what we did so far is checking off tasks or issues that arose during the week, creating next steps, seeing who's responsible for them, and then giving it also a due date so we can follow up. What we would also recommend is to add another section called tasks from last week, where now me as a facilitator, I can follow up with all the people that had tasks from last week. And there's a rule active in, in this Asana where a task that has been overdue or has been created by XYZ person will be moved into the task from last week section. So now my task would be to go through these tasks and ask the respective person, hey, have you done that? Have you called Apple to negotiate workshop pricing? In this case, the person still has some time, the due date is on the 26th of August, but now this person can say check or no check and everyone knows that this has been done. Especially my attention would go to these two tasks from Michelle to see that she's overdue with this task and also this task. So now I would ask her, what do you need? Is there a problem? Is there an issue we need to discuss? Why didn't you do it? Or she could say, oh, I've just forgot to check it off. This one's complete. And here would need some help, for example. And if she also needs some help on this task, everyone would know we could react. We could give it a new due date, for example. Here could say until tomorrow and um, also mark, for example, um, John uh, here, Christina Jones, let's just use this account um, to help her understand that she's in need for support here. All right. So quick up a quick summary. We discussed all the fixed agenda points reported on the um, portfolios or whatever Google or Excel file you have. We discussed points that come up every week, different points that are not recurring, but spontaneous. We created next steps for everyone um, based on the issues that we discussed. We s checked off tasks from last week and saw if the people have been doing that or need um, some input to, um, to finish. And then lastly, what we have here is meeting protocols. So some people prefer to really write a protocol for every meeting you have. So we would recommend to create one task called meeting protocols. Then just add a subtask for the specific day. Today is the 11th of August, 2021. And then you can just use this field here description to fill in all the, um, 
yeah, basically to write all the updates in here. This is quite um, old fashioned. What we would recommend rather is to just click on the top next to the meeting name, click on export and click on print. And this way you will create, a, you can create a PDF document that looks like this. You have the latest meeting agenda points, the responsible person and all the discussed issues, the next steps. So basically everything that you saw in the meeting protocol, this PDF can be saved and just stored here in the subtask that you created. Just upload the document here. So just clicking here on this um, icon from your computer or from OneDrive, depending where you, sh where you save the PDF document. And then all the steps of every week, all the issues of every week are documented by themselves. No one needed to write them because during the meeting, uh, you just checked off the tasks and people put in the tasks uh, and issues they needed to discuss anyways. So really this process helps you to fine tune your um, meeting workflow to really have an agenda that everyone can access to. During the week, people can add whatever issues they need to discuss. We have a clear timeline of how long the tasks need, how long you have time to discuss something. All the next steps are clear and the meeting protocol basically writes itself. The same process applies for one-on-one -on -one meetings that you can do with your colleagues that you meet on a regular basis. So if you want to know more, feel free to reach out to us. We are super happy to help you adjust this process for your individual needs, for your company needs and going to professionalize it for you. Thank you very much and looking forward to speaking with you.